Africa's flourishing consumer market, coupled with a promise of high investment returns, has caught the eye of several private equity firms as a race to invest on the continent. Beatrice Gashenga caught up with James Moria, CEO, Centum Holdings, to delve deeper on this. Thank you, Mr. Moria, for joining us on the show. Where do you see private equity opportunities in Africa? Well, I think there are, there are a number of opportunities, and uh, maybe it's good to say what is underpinning the opportunities, and you can understand the opportunities in a, in a better context. I think the improvements in governance have been very important because with improvements in governance, you're then addressing the key issues that have affected competitiveness of business in Africa. And those are largely institutions, infrastructure, the macroeconomic environment, and quality of basic health and education. If you look at Africa, with about 20% of the population, it accounts only for 3% of output. And the way I see it is that as our competitiveness improves, and if our average competitiveness gets to that of global average, then you should see Africa moving from 3% of global output to about 20% of global output. And I think that explains why seven of the ten fastest growing economies over the next ten years will be African countries. Now with that, a number of opportunities emerge. And these are in areas such as uh, consumer goods and services. Because you now have more people who have the ability to afford basic goods and services that they could not previously afford. The other areas are in infrastructure, particularly power. Uh, if you, the per capita consumption of power or availability of power in Africa is one of the lowest in the world and we're seeing increasing investment in power by almost every most sub-Saharan African countries. Again, there's a huge opportunity in, uh, in power. You mentioned attractive macroeconomic conditions in Africa and good competitiveness in the continent. Which are some of the countries that have caught your eye? Countries that are interesting for us in sub-Saharan Africa are the East African countries. Ghana is another interesting, uh, interesting opportunity. It's, it's the, the size of Ghana is largely similar to, to Kenya. They're now producing about 120,000 barrels of, of, of oil a day, about, accounts for about 8% of GDP, and we are seeing interesting uh, opportunities in, 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 in that country as well. And also these are countries that are common in terms of what is happening around their political governance and enhancement and improvements in political governance. Uh, Ghana is a good example. Again, it has had a peaceful transition this year. Kenya is interesting. I think Kenya is absolutely going to, to boom because it's been a huge political risk associated with uh, Kenya uh, by outsiders since 2007. And that, that I think has gone and, and, and you can see that reflected in the performance of the, of the stock market. Uh, Rwanda is uh, is interesting uganda so too i was in rwanda uganda last week for the uganda investment forum and uh, there's a lot of excitement and interest in that economy as well in your opinion how can private equity be used to unlock capital inflows into the continent the bulk of the inflows into this continent have been directed towards the extractive sectors of the economy so the largest fdi recipients have been countries with essentially with with, min with mineral resources either oil copper gold, diamond, and the rest. The non-resource countries have not been significant recipients of FDI. Now, private equity is addressing the productive segment of the economy. So it is, it is a form of capital that is coming to enhance our ability to produce more goods and services and uplift the quality of life of citizens and create employment. Now, to that extent, it's therefore different from, from traditional FDI or even from, from donor funds that have been directed towards uh, uh, addressing the consequences of, of, of low productivity, which is targeted towards health and education. So you're having P, private equity money coming in, being directed to productive sectors of the economy and expanding the economies of those countries and creating a multiplier effect and enhancing opportunities for other people to invest. At Centum, which are some of the projects that you are in this year? Our sector fo focus is on consumer goods and services. We are in the financial sector. We're focusing on uh, commercial and residential uh, real estate. And we're also focusing on power. Broadly, if you look at our portfolio, it can be clustered into those four, you know, those four, those four sectors. Now, 
the countries that we are currently focusing on is uh, Tanzania. We've invested in a, a company that is involved in the production of consumer goods. We are invested in uh, Uganda, and that is where we are doing uh, master plan developments in real estate. We investment in Rwanda, which again is focusing on uh, consumer goods. We invested in Ghana, in uh, the financial services uh, sector. So our geographical expansion strategy is in is two pronged. One hand is identifying new opportunities in the four sectors that I've mentioned to you in Sub-Saharan Africa. And the second one is supporting our portfolio companies that are looking to expand into the rest of the continent. And finally, looking at your first half result where you reported a 1.1 growth in profit, what would you predict or what is your projection for the full year results? First to start, we expect positive results. We are expecting uh, growth. But the bulk of the work we have been doing and that we continue to do is not yet reflected in our numbers. So in the, in the short run, I think we are seeing improved performance. In the medium term to long term, we'll actually see significantly better performance than you have seen in the past as we realize the benefits of the investments that we have been making over the last three years.